Hi, I'm Sharon Joseph. I am a writer and I have been married to my husband, Harry, for 52 years. We have two children. The first is Sandra. She's married to Andrew and she is a, um, a worker in the health and safety industry. She is into community health and safety. And she's also a very uh, talented artist. My son is with the Oakland County Sheriff Department as a deputy. He's stationed in Rochester Hills. And he also is into animal rescue and fostering of animals. He's put 50 some dogs through his home as a foster. I also have um, a background in early childhood development. That's where I spent my career. I taught preschool and um, kindergarten and also uh, became a center director for an early childhood uh, school system. Um, my hobbies are um, enjoying nature, bird watching. I like to play with my dog Snickers and I also love writing. I have written ever since I was a child, poems, essays, short stories, songs, and this book. And this I'm gonna share with you today is my favorite. It's a story about a little duck and his adventure to finding his own personal happiness. Please enjoy with me Reuben's Rainbow. It takes many colors of the world to make a rainbow. This is how a little special duck named Reuben finds his very own rainbow. In the pale yellow softness of the early morning sunrise, a new life was about to begin. Nestled away in the tall grasses that grew near the edge of a bubbling blue stream, Reuben poked his fuzzy little head out of his shell. With a big sigh and a little whistle, a baby duck said hello to the world. Reuben tried unsuccessfully to stumble to his feet. Now some clumsiness is expected with the few first few hours of life. It's very hard work breaking out of a shell. Little ducklings need to rest a bit while um, rest a little while before attempting to explore the wetlands around them. As the day went on, morning turned into afternoon. The warm yellow sun grew brighter. The bubbling blue stream sparkled with excitement as it welcomed the new family to its rocky edges. One by one, eight little balls of fluff peeked out from under the cozy soft blanket of their mother's snowy white down. They played catch the butterfly and hide and seek. Reuben could only watch from a distance. Reuben would never learn to run and play just like the brothers and sisters. He was a little different than the rest of the ducklings that lived near the edge of the bubbling blue stream. On, Reuben, on Reuben's legs, one of them was shorter than the other, and with the webbing on that foot was curled. It wasn't flat and strong like the others. He heard his father say it was called a birth defect. His mother said he was physically challenged. 
He heard the other ducklings in the bubbling blue stream call him cruel names like ugly and peg leg and stumpy. They were all near words that he did not understand. All he knew was he felt sad and different than the rest. The bright yellow sunshine of the afternoon gave way to the rosy pink shades of the approaching twilight. Reuben teetered and tumbled, waddled and stumbled, as he made his way to join his brothers and sisters. All snuggled beneath the warm, protective comfort of their mother's snowy white down. Day turned into weeks, and the soft, fuzzy ducklings began to grow. Yellow fluff gave way to feathers. Happy and excited, the ducklings all ran to the edge of the bubbling blue stream. One by one, they peered into the water and quacked with glee at the sight of their reflections. Waddled, Reuben waddled and stumbled as he followed the others to see what all the noise was about. Reuben found his family pruning their feathers. Each admired the perfectly placed snowy white down. He too peered into the nature's mirror, but Reuben was surprised at what he saw. Half of his body was covered with snowy white feathers, like the others, but his head was green. He had sections of shiny midnight black, blue, and mottled browns and grays. With a tear trickling down his cheek, he heard someone say, Look at Reuben, he looks like a clown. He wished to himself that he wasn't different. He wished that his foot wasn't curled. He wished that he, too, could run and play like the others. Just as Reuben hung his head and began to turn away, he felt reassuring nudges from his parents as they came down to walk beside him. Soon he was joined by his brothers and sisters, and they all told Reuben to be proud of the duck that was inside those feathers. We are very proud of you just the way you are, his mother softly whispered. You need to search for your very own rainbow. Reuben, there you will find your heart, your happiness. Reuben's mother was a farm duck who never knew the freedom of flight. Nonetheless, she was very content to live on the edge of the bubbling blue stream. His father was from a colorful family of world travelers called Mallards. Reuben was a pleasant mixture of both, but because he was different than the rest, he often found himself left out of playtime. So Reuben grew to love sitting in the bright yellow sun and listening to his father tell adventures of stories far away. His father spoke of the wind through his feathers as he soared across the bright blue sky. He spoke of lakes and oceans golden cornfields, and purple mountains standing tall and majestic. As Reuben listened to his father's stories, he kept hearing his mother's words whispering over and over, Reuben, you need to search for your very own rainbow. There you will find happiness. We're going to stop for a minute and kind of recall our story so far. Um, do you remember what the name of our duck is? Yes, that's right. It's Reuben. 
And why was Reuben feeling kind of sad? Could it be because he felt different and he felt other ducks thought he was funny looking? Well, what do you think Reuben decided to do about that? His mom told him that he had to look for his own happiness to find his own rainbow. Hi, this is Evan Carr, and I'm an AmeriCorps Vista. Hi, I'm Kathy Dickens, Executive Director of Four County Community Foundation. So Kathy, how did the partnership between Four County Community Foundation and AmeriCorps begin? That's a great question. Um, it was kind of a, almost a divine intervention, if you will. The foundation had been engaged in uh, working with food distribution mm -hmm. during COVID, and that was a way that we could uh, you know, serve the public in a very meaningful and relevant way during COVID. And uh, I actually just got an email that uh, referenced uh, AmeriCorps Vista uh, having a program whereby we could have a, a summer work associate assigned to work in the food security um, sector. And at that time, we had just uh, granted money and had conversations with three nonprofits that had gardens. And I thought, wow, this could be a fantastic partnership between those nonprofits, uh, AmeriCorps Vista and Four County Community Foundation. And so basically it was all an email. I'm glad because that is how I got my involvement in mm -hmm. food scarcity is through this AmeriCorps program. Mm -hmm. So how exactly did Four County begin their food scarcity initiatives? Yeah, um, again, COVID kind of drew attention to uh, food security issues and food distribution issues in our area. And uh, we service uh, Lapeer, St. Clair, Oakland, and Macomb counties. And uh, essentially, um, again, to be relevant and meaningful during COVID, we issued several thousand dollars, I think between 30 and 40 thousand dollars to local food pantries especially to provide them with freezers and refrigerators to be able to store foods that weren't uh, shelf safe. In other words, cans and boxes will have a, a long shelf life, but some of the uh, basics of life, the eggs, the milk, the, the meat, um, they needed uh, appliances to put those in. And so we were able to commit several thousand dollars to that. And, and that got me better associated and partnered with uh, the local food pantries. That's amazing. So how can people in the community become more involved in Four Counties initiatives? Oh, absolutely. We're a phone call away. They can just call the office, uh, Four County Community Foundation. We're housed in Elmont, but again, we serve the Four County area. Mm -hmm. And I love to receive phone calls just of inquiry, conversation, uh, people who uh, have maybe money they want to contribute or maybe just a great idea and so any of those are welcome and uh, we can have coffee and we can dream and we can uh, make a difference together that's what I live for it's what the foundation lives for we have hundred and thirty funds actually over hundred and thirty different funds uh, that we oversee each have an own, their own purpose and their own mission within the four county area and I will say that uh, it related to the topic we're discussing uh, we did initiate in January a Feeding Families Forever Fund 
And my intent with that was to have a, a, an established fund that would be there forever and ever into perpetuity for food security in our four county area. I'm very, very heartwarmed that that fund was endowed within a few months. Uh, it grew from zero to about 14, no, I take that back, $17,000 within a few months. And so those dollars are earmarked for, for food security. So anybody who has a heart for that um, could definitely call us and we they could contribute straight to that fund uh, again or create their own or um, we issue grants uh, to Samaritan House and uh, many many different uh, food pantries the Oxford Orion fish many of them we partner with so that's in many ways we support food security and that's amazing it's been nice to see all of the projects Fort mm -hmm. County has been able to complete and help mm -hmm. their local area and mm -hmm. we're excited to see what they're doing next So let's continue and see what happened and what Reuben does. Now that Reuben had grown up feathers, he knew it was time for his own adventure to begin. One evening, as the rosy pink shades of twilight covered the blue sky, Reuben teetered and tumbled, waddled and stumbled to the edge of the bubbling blue stream and jumped in. He let the cool, flowing waters carry him past the tall green grass that he knew as home. Over the bumpy brown rocks on the riverbed in the dark and unfamiliar world that awaited him, beyond the bubbling blue stream, Reuben began to search for his very own rainbow and happiness. In the pale yellow softness of the early morning sunrise, Reuben found himself far away from the bubbling blue stream and the tall grass that he knew as home. He was in the middle of a big brown river. Reuben gracefully paddled down the river bank, for in the water he could move like the other ducks, other ducks did, and reaching the shore, he teetered and tumbled, waddled and stumbled to a resting place in the warm morning sun where he fell fast asleep. The pale yellow of morning gave way to the bright sunshine of the afternoon, and Reuben awoke to spend the afternoon teetering and tumbling, waddling and mumbling his way through the park. He saw, heard the sounds that he'd never heard before. Could he be in the places far away that his father told him about? So Reuben teetered and tumbled, waddled and stumbled to the top of the bank of the Big Brown River, and then he saw them, children. Lots of children were running and playing, giggling and laughing, Reuben had found himself in the middle of the park located in a town called Rochester, Michigan. Not far from the banks of the Big Brown River, he came to a pond filled with other ducks. Some looked as the father, and some looked like the mother. But none looked like Reuben. Reuben missed the family. He felt alone. He hoped that no one noticed that his curled up foot or his mixed feathers made him different. Reuben paddled down to a group of farm ducks, but they swam away. He went over to a group of mallards, but they all put their heads under the water. Once again, Reuben felt different and unwanted. He wished he could be like the other ducks in the pond. On the far side of the pond, Reuben could see a large gathering of ducks, and again he heard the sounds of children laughter. 
The children were feeding the, nu the ducks, and everyone seemed happy. His journey had made him quite hungry. He joined the others, and no one seemed to matter that he was different, at least not just right away. Reuben was happy, and the children were happy. He didn't notice that a little group of gut ducks had been swimming along behind him. As Reuben turned around to catch a piece of bread, the little group of ducks began to laugh and tease and splash water all over him. A farm duck snapped his bill, and some mallards pushed him under the water, and they all swam in circles around Reuben, quacking, Go away! You don't belong here! Reuben began to cry. A little girl in the edge of the pond saw what was happening to the others, and she called out to her mother, and her mother called for help. From across the pond, the cries for help were heard. A sheriff deputy, Deputy Mike, was patrolling the park that day and quickly came running. Help him, cried the little girl and her mother. Deputy Mike made a loud noise and waved his hands and chased away the ducks that were pecking and poking and splashing Reuben. Reuben swam as fast as his little legs would paddle to the edge of the city pond. He crawled out of the water. Reuben teetered and tumbled, waddled and stumbled right up to Deputy Mike, where he was found frightened and exhausted. He took refuge behind the officer's legs. The officer gently picked Reuben up and held him close. Reuben took a deep sigh and felt safe and loved. It no longer mattered that his foot was curled. It no longer mattered that his feathers were mixed. Reuben was accepted, and he knew he had found a friend. Deputy Mike knew quite a quiet spot, not far from where Reuben was, that he could live peacefully and where differences didn't matter. He, too, he took Reuben to a tiny secluded lake at the edge of the winding road in the back of Addison Oaks Park in Oakland County. Here, Reuben would be safe, tucked away from his hustle and bustle of picnic packers and overnight campers, Reuben found a new home. There were many visitors that came and went from the tiny pond each day. There were cry cranes and ducks, swans and geese, frogs and fish, butterflies, and twinkling evening fireflies. All were very different from each other, and yet they all shared one special thing. They all accepted each other as friends. Deputy Mike, Ranger Roberts, the park manager, and the other park deputies stopped by the pond each day to check on Reuben and leave him corn and breadcrumbs to share with his new friends. All summer, he was wonderful for having so much fun with his friends. He remembered his father's whispering and his mother's whispering, you have to search for your own rainbow, Reuben, and there you will find your happiness. Reuben hoped the day would come and he could find and share his new family with his family that he was born to. Yes, Reuben was indeed happy 
and yet he still hadn't seen a rainbow. It takes many colors of the world to make a rainbow. Reuben lived in the middle of his very own rainbow the whole time. Reuben's rainbow was made by the golden yellow of Sheriff Deputy Star, the green of the tall green grass and trees that surrounded the pond and the fishing frogs that splashed in the water. There was blue from the bright sky above and water that trickled in the little pond. The purple came from the lovely wildflowers that grew near the water's edge. The cheery cardinals that nested in the clump of woods on the far side of the shore offered brilliant reds, and there was rosy pink of the twilight skies. But there was no orange. Where was the orange? There was no orange in the tiny pond at Addison Oaks, so this must not be his rainbow. As Reuben splashed his way across the tiny pond, he noticed a flash of orange under the water. The orange was coming from Reuben's very own two feet. Yes, he had found the orange needed to complete his rainbow. Think about it. It was the very thing that had made him different from the other ducklings that so awful day in Rochester. Reuben had completed his rainbow with the very same thing that made him different from all the others. Reuben found his rainbow that day. It was right there, a part of him all the time. I hope you enjoyed our story. I enjoyed writing it. It actually was based on a true incident that happened a few years ago at the park in Rochester. There were a bunch of real live ducks and they were all gathered around one poor little duck and they were picking on him because he was different. And the deputy came and, and rescued him and brought him out to the park in Addison Oaks where there was a nice peaceful little pond and let him go there so he would have lots of friends that would be nice and nice to him. And then when winter came, the water started to freeze and poor Reuben, he couldn't fly because he was half of a farm duck and half mallard. So he wanted to fly, he wanted to, to migrate but he couldn't get up and fly in the air because he was a farm duck too. So we found an animal rescue that took care of wild waterfowl that had um, disabilities in one way or another. And they welcomed Reuben to their family and he lived out the rest of his life happy in that uh, little West rescue pond. Uh, a couple years after that, we went back just to see if he was still there. And we looked and looked and couldn't find Reuben. So we figured maybe he'd moved on to another adventure. We turned to walk away. And in the distance, we heard quack, 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 quack. It was Reuben. He recognized us. And he came to say hello and goodbye, and we were very happy that we had helped him find his happiness. Thank you for sharing today with me. I really enjoyed it.